Hi, this is Marco Solorio from One River Media. Today I'm digging a little deeper with the Blackmagic Cinema Camera. If you saw my last video comparing the Cinema Camera and the 5D Mark III, there were some eye-opening conclusions between both cameras. As a result, people are now asking me to compare a whole multitude of cameras. Well, unfortunately due to time, that's not going to happen. But I do have an alternate solution. In a way, the first video was merely scratching the surface. Today I'm in the main edit suite here at One River Media. Rather than show how well the cinema camera compares to other specific cameras, I'm going to show you how well the cinema camera compares globally in 8-bit space. Here's the thing. The vast majority of video cameras today, including those that are much more expensive than the cinema camera, work in 8-bit space. Whether it's the new Panasonic GH3, or the Canon C300, or even the 4K resolution Canon 1DC, shooting in 8-bit space has its number of limitations. These are all great cameras in their own right, including some I have myself. As such, I'm not isolating any particular type of camera here. What I am doing is showing how much more flexibility and quality you can obtain from a 12-bit raw source to that of an 8-bit source. There's perceived dynamic range, and there's available dynamic range. Perceived dynamic range is the latitude you see in an image and immediately say, wow, that has a lot of dynamic range. It doesn't matter what camera it is, or what bit depth it's in, or whatever flavor of picture profile voodoo you apply to it. With perceived dynamic range, you get the impression of dynamic range. And sure, sometimes it looks great after post-processing has been applied. But with available dynamic range, you're in a different scenario entirely. Available dynamic range gives you image manipulation that you don't see until you actually use it. It's available dynamic range where all APIC cameras struggle. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Rather than pull comparison footage from an 8-bit camera, I'm going to convert my 12-bit RAW footage from the cinema camera itself and turn that into an 8-bit source. This will ensure that the footage matches exactly and that the 8-bit footage isn't purposefully botched in any way. In fact, the 8-bit footage we'll be using, again converted from the 12-bit source, is much higher in quality than had I shot it with an 8-bit camera. Keep that in mind when watching. To really show the impact of available dynamic range at high bit depths, I'm using a clip I shot inside a room with only practical lighting and shooting directly out the window on a bright sunny day into the sky. So what I did first was pull the 12-bit RAW footage into After Effects CS6 with its default settings in Adobe RAW Reader 2012. From there, I created a comp and exported that to the uncompressed 8-bit codec. Keep in mind too that I'm doing this 12-bit to 8-bit conversion at 32-bit float processing, again, higher than any internal processing any video camera would provide. Likewise, every frame in the 8-bit uncompressed file has its own keyframe, again, maintaining quality higher than any 8-bit camera. The first thing I'm going to do is open the new 8-bit file in Adobe RAW Reader. Now if we move the exposure slider to the right, we see an increase in the shadow area of the room. But if I wanted to recover any highlight detail from the window, well, this is where we hit a brick wall with any 8-bit file. By moving the exposure slider back down to zero, then beyond that into negative exposure area, we quickly see the blown out window simply turns gray. There is no image data to recover because once you clip, there's nothing you can recover. Okay, so now I'm viewing the 12-bit raw clip in Adobe Raw Reader. Again, if I pump up the exposure, we see shadow detail come alive. Okay, back to the default exposure. Like the 8-bit version, both files seem to be blown out in the window area. But this is where 12-bit latitude trumps any form of 8-bit processing on any camera. As I move the exposure slider to the left, going into negative exposure space, we now see image recovery in the window, in the sky, and even in the clouds. Mathematically, this is an impossible task to perform in 8-bit space. But in 12-bit space, it's no problem at all. By playing with the sliders, I can quickly create a balance of shadow and highlight recovery.
Keep your eye on the left image. At 50 megabits per second, the compression blocking washes out any sibilance of remaining detail. If I really wanted to get fancy, I can create an HDR style composite by exposing one layer for the shadows and a second layer for the highlights. Again, there's no way you can do this from a single shot using an 8-bit camera. Blown out windows aren't the only advantage to using available dynamic range. Next is one of my favorite examples to show the sheer power of 12-bit latitude day for night. Here I'm using a shot from my last comparison video. As you can see, this is an extremely bright day without a cloud in the sky. It almost seems unthinkable to use this as a day for night shot, but in less than 10 seconds, I can turn this blast of sunlight into a very believable night shot, complete with moonlight highlights and realistic nightfall horizon. Cop in some stars and the moon, and your scene is complete. I found it interesting that there were some people that mentioned they actually prefer the look of the Canon 5D's blown out bokeh highlights, as opposed to the non-blown out bokeh highlights the cinema camera can provide. But let's be clear, if you want blown out highlights in your cinema camera footage, then you're more than able to accomplish that too. Remember, available dynamic range is your friend. It allows you to create a look or recover image data that is otherwise impossible to obtain in 8-bit latitude. Another interesting comment I've read from people is that such high dynamic range from the cinema camera isn't needed since the footage they're shooting only ends up on the web. As shown in my previous examples, available dynamic range will allow you to manipulate footage to an extreme that is otherwise impossible with 8-bit cameras. Even with perceived dynamic range, using as much latitude as possible in your finished video will only help to serve the quality you're aiming for, even if your web deployment includes Vimeo or YouTube. I also want to take a moment to clear up something that a lot of people were mentioning in my comparison video regarding the 5D's lack of sharpness. Let me clarify that detail and sharpness are not one and the same. Detail is the amount of individual image information within a specified area of concentration. Sharpness is merely the contrast level of the detail edging, but does not add any new image detail information from the original image. So what does that mean when comparing the 5D and the cinema camera? If we look at one of the comparison shots in my last video, we can clearly see that the 5D's image lacks detail in the camera's rasterization of the image as compared to that of the cinema camera. Even if we increase the sharpness of the 5D's image, it doesn't actually add any detail to the image. We might get a little perceived detail in the 5D's image, but it will never add the fine detail to that of the cinema camera. It's mathematically impossible due to the 5D's internal scaling algorithm. And let's not forget, inasmuch as we can increase sharpness for the 5D, so too can we do it for the cinema camera. Although the 5D can't achieve the same level of detail as a cinema camera, I still use my 5D Mark II and Mark III alongside my cinema camera in many productions. I still stand strong to the notion that the cinema camera has the highest quality to cost ratio of any camera on the market. Unlike many cameras that offer beautiful perceived dynamic range, the cinema camera goes far beyond that with available dynamic range. Couple that with its razor sharp detail and you have a camera that offers amazing results at very low cost. If you're interested in more information about the cinema camera, I'll be releasing an instructional video specifically about techniques I've used on cinema camera productions before and since its public release. It includes instruction on everything from pre-production, production, post-production, post workflow, tips, and techniques. If you're interested, go to my website at onerivermedia.com slash bmcc. Thanks for continuing to watch my updates on the cinema camera.